This is the Nomad Futurist Podcast, a podcast about the evolution of technology, society, and transformation. Connect with us, share your thoughts with us at nomadfuturist.com. Let's get this started. Here are Phil and Nabil. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Nomad Futurist. This is your co-host, Nabil Mahmood from Kona, Hawaii. This is your co-host, Philip Koblenz from Montclair, New Jersey. Phil, it's just you and I today. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, it's, it feels weird. But what a year this has been. For starters, want to wish everyone happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, and whatever other holiday that you celebrate. This time of year is just nonstop. Yeah. I, it's actually one of my favorite times of the year. Not that I necessarily slow it down, but I just love the feeling of connectivity and people enjoying and being a little bit more chill, kind of like me. Uh, yeah, totally. I always have snow in my mind when it comes to Christmas. So it's interesting that from Hawaii, you have that same kind of warm and fuzzy feeling around it. What is the phrase? Piliki Maka? Exactly. Yeah, Maka. Before yeah. we get started, I want to take this opportunity to thank our partners, the foundation partners, Nexus partners, Corner Store partners, and the media partners. This year has been absolutely phenomenal for us to really kickstart the Nomad Futurist Foundation and the initiative. And it's all in the numbers. I think we've been able to get in front of the right people, right audience, whether it be students, the educators, and also our partners. So very excited to share that we are in the right direction and can't wait to get more partners on board to further the cause, which I want to take this time to talk a little bit through and about that, Phil. So what are we trying to accomplish? Can we start by just acknowledging that this year, I say it every year that it flies by, but the idea that we're talking in December, it feels like it was January 10 minutes ago, yeah. and then it was the summer, and now part of it might be a global warming phenomenon. It's not really that cold in Jersey, so I still don't feel it, but every year I feel like the Christmas season starts early and earlier, like the displays and all the stores start earlier and earlier, and yet I'm still surprised when we are at the holiday season. It always sneaks up on me. It is just crazy. Isn't there another reference for that called age, that we are aging? It's possible. It's possible that uh, contextually in my life, one year means less than it did uh, in the previous years because it's less of a percentage of my life. But still, my grandparents used to say time starts flying by. I never took their word for it. Let me be the one to tell you, kids. It just goes by faster and faster and faster every single year. And it's crazy. But where we have come as a foundation from where we started this year, which was really as an idea, as a concept, we talked through what AFCOM the year before, this concept of creating an academy, creating an organization that introduces our industry to both children and people that don't really understand what we do, even though they use it on a regular basis. And to see something go from concept to inspiring the ambassadors that we've been able to bring on board and just a recognition that this idea that we had has resonated and taken on a life of its own. It's amazing to see what shape this foundation and what kind of momentum we've been able to achieve in, what, 12 short months? And like I said, they're getting shorter and shorter every year. It's phenomenal. Clearly, there is a need for what we're doing, and it's one thing to conceptualize it, and it's another thing to be on this ride with you where you see people actually starting to believe in it and helping us move it forward, and in some cases, moving it forward on their own, where we're just like holding on for the ride. Yeah, it's absolutely a phenomenal time. I would say best time of my life. Which life? The first one? Yeah, exactly. The third one? The third one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's great to surround ourselves with people that are motivated to do the right thing. As we have talked about it several times, we have a significant human capital deficit as the industry is growing dramatically. And we are set forth to pass the legacy on to the next generation and bring younger people and smarter people into the space. And that can only be done by combining and unifying the sector and educating the younger people as well as educating the educators and also creating the digital awareness around us. So this year, we've been able to help about 40 students in the Bahamas with some computing devices and networking. And I want to thank Mara Irwin, who initiated that program. So that was great collaboration. And of course, going out speaking in multiple events throughout the year around the world, as well as speaking in front of the students. That was actually really the most fun part of no doubt i think again we came up with this idea of trying to get out in front of students but how do you really do it and with jody's help and just seeing individuals that happen to be present in a location and it just happened so organically that obviously anybody that follows either nabil or i on linkedin realizes that we speak at all these conferences and we're everywhere and nobody likes posting pictures of themselves on linkedin more than i do except maybe nabil 
But I think when we met Lynette from Avid Avila, yeah. and from the Mountain View Los Altos School District, and we just kind of organically were introduced into a position that I think would typically take years to kind of cultivate, where they allowed us to present our industry directly to the children in no time. By August, I was hosting just by happenstance. It happened to coordinate with what I could get out to California, and they allowed us to speak to the students in Mountain View. And it was incredible. We were able to put on that first panel where we didn't really have a set agenda. It was just trying to organically see what stuck with these kids. We were able to get Paul from IT Creations to hook us up with just an amazing like cabinet full of servers and switches so they can see it and touch it and feel it. And we were able to put together a panel that included Shweta from Netflix and Christian from TikTok and trying to take applications that these kids and frankly, the adults use in their regular lives and contextualize it by making it clear that the industry that we stumbled upon, that we're constantly interviewing people on our podcast that just accidentally came upon the industry because of the right place, the right time. We're introducing it as a concept to these kids that really have no idea what it is, which is insane because they are more technically savvy even than we are. But this is infrastructure that existed their entire lives. We use that point that came up again organically through no type of scripting that the iPhone came out in 2007. If you don't make memories for a couple of years, that suggests that if you are 17, 20 years old, you don't know a world in which the internet didn't exist, in which the iPhone didn't exist. And that's fascinating because as an industry, we're so good at, we focus on uptime and making sure that we never go down, that it is a double-edged sword, right? We don't have an industry that is at the forefront of the focus and coming off of the pandemic and people getting back to work, but being more beholden to technology than ever before, whether they're at the office or at home or at school or what have you, just seeing their eyes light up, like with a recognition that the cloud doesn't exist in the sky and these windows buildings that they pass every day between home and school and they never knew what existed and actually taking it from there to touring them through the evocative data center and in North Carolina through the Flexential data center. It's just been fascinating to just see them light up and not trying to inundate them with information, just allowing them to take in the fact that these buildings exist. And I feel like we have become that connective tissue to an industry that has been so shrouded in mystery makes it seem like we're doing it intentionally, although security through obscurity was a phrase that we came up with. It's just that we fell into it and those that we're all doing, we're all still in it because there's not enough human capital to allow us, for God's sakes, to retire. But it's been a phenomenal year and it's flown by. And I think we're set up to have massive impact and certainly the year ahead and the years ahead. And all I can say is I'm grateful to be on this journey, not just with you, Nabil, but with all of the people that have taken up this cause as their own. We've always said that it's not about me and Nabil. This is not about us personally. This is about trying to lay the groundwork for something that lives beyond us and that takes on a life of its own. And I feel like this year, more than any other, we've really seen that come crystallize and coming into focus with the ambassadors that we've been able to bring in and really the passion that they have brought to, again, what started as an idea earlier this year. And it's really taken off. Yeah, it's wonderful to see that it started to take a shape of its own. There's been a lot of learning, especially from understanding how 501c3 is a non profits work around the world and nothing that I've done by myself or in partnership with somebody like you, Phil. So it's certainly been a great journey. And the fact that the team brings a diverse experience from helping us create and launch an online academy and putting compliance and standards into the foundation, as well as governance for the academics, that's great to see. So we're really excited to launch the academy next year. Besides that, working on scholarship funds and internship programs and creating job opportunities for people that are in the space. It's been very interesting. Most recently, I was at an event in the Silicon Valley, and it was interesting to see that we actually opened up the invite to a few of the students. And one of the students that came across recently had graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science with zero idea what he wanted to do. Put him on the stage. And it's great to see that this was a sector that was actually not in his radar. And It's uh, crazy. It, like you would think crazy, that a computer yeah. science students, we had the same experience with the teachers in Mountain View that we interviewed after that panel that 
that we did, and they were computer science teachers, and they didn't really have context into what our industry is. And you take for granted that people just get it, especially if they're into computers or they're into programming or whatever, and they just don't, because how could they? The reason why when you ask a kid, and I think we posted a video of my daughter doing this, like what the cloud is, they say cumulonimbus or whatever <laughs> cloud formations they know, is because that's what they're taught in school. There is no curriculum that shows what the internet is and how it's formed. There are technology and theme curricula that talk about how individual specific applications work that aid in the education of the traditional education system. So instead of giving out textbooks, they have these online textbooks in some cases that teach the same stuff. But the idea that they don't have the tools to teach what the baseline internet is, where do all these things live, is insanity. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see that light bulb moment, not just with the students, but with the teachers, with the educators, with the administrators. We've had conversations with the Santa Clara School District. We've had conversations with other people more nationally in the AVID program. And it's been fascinating to recognize that this is not just a secret to people that are not tech savvy. Our industry is a secret to everyone that utilizes technology that isn't specifically within the bubble of our industry in an acute way. And it just only speaks to how important what we're doing is. And one other thing I wanted to mention was we also brought administrators. We were lucky enough to partner with Open Compute to the Open Compute Conference in California. And again, to see the wide-eyed teachers and administrators that are looking at next generation of silica and chipsets and compute, it's fascinating to see the excitement on adults, kids' faces, whoever, that are inevitably attracted to technology because we're all glued to our devices. And just to see like the underlying infrastructure and to have exposure to it, it's an amazing journey, but it's an amazing journey because you're getting those people excited again. And it's not just about like come into this industry because there's a job for you and because you can make more and you don't necessarily need a college degree. All that stuff is important. But what we always talk about is this concept of work-life balance. And what continues to come out on the podcast that we do is that if you love it, it's not work. So you exude so much effort doing the things that you do professionally to make money. And if it's something that you're passionate about and our industry is acutely situated to allow you to follow your passion, which is why even from an academy standpoint, we're not focused on teaching a set of curriculum. It is a very fluid type of system that allows students of all ages to recognize what it is we do and follow their passion and almost that kind of Montessori style experiential way of learning that allows you to find where you belong in this industry instead of trying to squeeze this industry into what you're good at. You're just natural at it, Phil, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, don't, I like it. I like it. Yeah, not work. No, it's not work. It's not work yeah. because I don't make any money doing it, but it's all <laughs> not work because I love it. Yeah, this is absolutely phenomenal. I want to take this time to thank all the ambassadors that have come on board and joined us. And we look forward to adding more people globally. I want to take the time to thank all the partners that want to come on board, media partners in particular as well, like the Tech Capital, Broad Group. We had W Media, Data Center Miller, Magazine. I Miller, and, uh, yeah. I Miller as well. Uh, yeah. Alyssa is absolutely phenomenal. Her team is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you. Everything that everyone's doing and spreading the word. And we can't do this without you guys. So I look forward to 2024 to be even more successful than this has been in 23 look forward to further enhancing on the initiatives that we have set forth and launching the program to a broader audience. And we need more help. It is never ending. The amount of effort that it's going to take to drive this forward is only going to increase as our reach increases, right? So this, it's an end of the year wrap up podcast and an excuse to use pictures of us on sleigh rides or you and Knobloch on a <laughs> sleigh ride, but it's also an appeal to not sit on the sidelines. We need your help. If you're in our industry, if you're interested in our industry, if you want to help and you believe in digital infrastructure in general and the growth of AI and all of the elements that support it and surround it, to a certain extent, it's inevitable. So the more help, the more involvement, and we've started launching different ways for people to get involved. You don't necessarily have to commit the amount of time that it requires to be an ambassador, although we'd love to have people as ambassadors. We have an advocate status and a membership status, et cetera, where anyone can be involved. And we want to broaden this group as much as possible, both geographically, ethnically, globally, et cetera. Absolutely. Well, with that said, I'm speechless. <laughs> we as a foundation have achieved our first mission, which was to make the <laughs> speechless. 
Yeah. We have not I mean, th this... achieved our second mission, which is to make me speechless. So next year. <laughs> this has certainly been a heartwarming experience you know, and a phenomenal journey. So here's the magic Christmas and holidays. I wish everyone joy and laughter. And thank you for your continued support as we get into 2024. Happy holidays, everyone. This has been great. Nothing lasts forever. Markets will come back, currencies will rebound, businesses will go on, and we will all move on. That could happen next week, next month, or next year. At Nomad Futures, we are confident that those who prepare rather than panic will come out of this stronger. Thank you for joining us. This has been brought to you by Nomad Futurist. Check us online at nomadfuturist.org. And thank you for listening and subscribing, as well as your continued support.